In this video, I'm going to show you three Graston techniques that I use with all of my Tommy John athletes. You know, I use Graston a lot in my clinical practice. You know, I bought multiple sets for my clinics, but you know, with what we're going to show today, we're going to use two that one's more diffuse, one's more point. Be very careful when you're applying Graston because it can be very uncomfortable. And that's why I always tell my therapist to make sure they do it on themselves so they can know which areas, bony prominences, there's certain soft tissue areas that are less tolerable to pressure. So it's important that you use you know, them on yourself to make sure that you can be effective and not cause too much discomfort. You know, there's some new, new tools that have come out. Rock tape has their own. You know, once again, make sure you use the right edge. And sometimes it's always, it, you know, it is always better to start more diffuse and then go to more specific. You know, we did a video last week on uh, a mobilization technique for a scar for Tommy John. So make sure you check that out. But what we're going to do today is we're going to use the Graston technique on a scar so that you can see how to do it more effectively. So. You know, I'm going to use rock rub, you know, Graston has their own. I like the rock rub because it's a, it lasts a little bit longer. It's a little bit easier to spread out. So what I'll do is I'll take a little bit, not too much, because you put too much, it gets a little too slippery. So you want to be able to have just enough where you can move the tool, but not too much where it becomes ineffective or you slip too much. So I'll rub it in a little bit. And you know, depending on the acuity of the injury, the scar mobility, what you're trying to accomplish. I'll always start more diffuse. You got the contoured grasping tool. You know, I'll take the beveled edge and I'll just start going along the scar lightly. Get the athlete used to it. Always being careful around bony prominences. So, you know, the first technique I use is always diffuse. So I gradually start to increase my pressure and as I said in our previous videos, what you want to check out is make sure that you're avoiding bony prominences. So you got to do these things on yourself, have multiple people try them on you so that you know where the areas where you can push hard is and know where the areas where you absolutely don't want to push hard. So over the medial epicondyle, not a very comfortable position to be pushed on, but first technique, I'm just constantly going up and down. So I'll mobilize superiorly. And that's why it's so important to test where your hypomobility is because sometimes you want to change your orientation. If I've got more inferior hypomobility, I'll change the angle and I'll be pushing downward. So I'll be dragging the tool towards me. So, you know, we showed in another previous video testing. So it's very important that you make sure you're mobilizing in the direction that you need to go. So for Max, it was more of a superior hypomobility. So I'll get a little bit more pressure and I'll go over and over. You're going to see some redness, a little petechiae. So he's not, he's, you know, he's mobile above the epicondyle. He's hypo below. So my first technique is always diffuse. And sometimes that's all the athlete can tolerate. So Max has done this before. I've got a pretty good idea of how his reactivity is. So I will only spend like one to two minutes on it. So you can see it's getting a little bit redder. Sometimes I'll just change the angle a little bit, work more the medial part of the scar, then I'll, you know, more towards the lateral part of the scar. So you can see it get tethered up right there. There's where you can see the, that's why the Graston tools are so nice, because you can actually push up and you can see where it blanches. And then you can feel where he's tethered right there. So when I find that point tenderness, I'll switch tools and I'll sometimes push my thumb down. So I'll grab it. I usually bring a towel so I get a little better grip. And so I'll push down and then I'll take the beveled edge and then I'll focus more on that spot. So I'm going more. So if you just do it like this, you don't get to see how it moves superiorly. I'll push, apply a downward pressure and then I'll work right on that spot. How are we doing, Max? Right. Okay. Sometimes I'll stuff a sock in the athlete's mouth so they can't cry. Max is somewhat tough. So I work on that for about 30 to 45 seconds. I'll go more towards the inside. So, well, there you can really feel it right there. 
So fibrous tissue has a very interesting feel and with the grass and tools you can feel it. You can feel it. It's like it, it, it's like going over, you know, bumpy rope. So now from there, I'll just kind of let it calm down a little bit. You know, you want to be banging on it for that long because it is. It's somewhat uncomfortable, but it's so effective. See now, you look at it. See, it's moving way better. So another thing, sometimes you get those deep adhesions, and the third technique that I'll use is I'll try and lift the scar. So, you know, with the fact that they've got the beveled edges, you can go medium lateral, you can go side to side and then do the scar underneath. So I'll push towards the tools, towards each other. I'll scoop and then I'll... This is the one you have to be very, very careful with. As athletes, they'll let you know. So you can see there's a little bump right there, a little nodule we'll have to work on. So that's why when you elevate the scar, you can see that much more you know you go side to side you start the same distance apart you bring them together and then you can feel like there's a little bit of an adhesion right there see so then yep i'll just go right there which is where and i'll go side to side sometimes you gotta be very careful because if you push too hard and i'll just apply a constant pressure to it now work the one side So you can apply it multiple directions, multiple planes, but you lift the scar, mobilize as you pull towards the sky. It's very, very effective for scar mobility. So when you work with your Tommy John athletes, you're constantly assessing and testing, and you're also trying to do everything you can manually with your hands to try and free up that scar so that there's not even a remote possibility that they're getting held up by something that can be easily addressed and often missed in a clinical setting. So three graphs and techniques that you can use that can make you better as a clinician and help your athlete.